These past few months, I've been deeming a game of Starfinder for a few friends of mine. For those who have never played Starfinder before, I'd highly recommend it. It's basically Pathfinder in space. I had started this campaign with the utmost intention of keeping it interesting. I had a highly developed enemy that commanded an entire spasa fleet, led by a capital ship called the Nagatha. High five to my people out there who get that reference I thought that my players understood this. But, continuing with my woes as a DM, my thoroughly thought out game gradually fell into a giant episode of It's Always Sunny and Starfinder. I figured this out, the moment my party decided on the name of their ship. The SS Sail Hatchin, a destroyer class vessel that they outfitted to be the greatest space pirating vessel known to life. For you see, they wanted to be space pirates. Now, I can't really blame them. That would be my go-to instinct as a new player. And me being a big softy who has trouble saying no to how my players like to RP and not control how they play the game I'll let them tweak a few parts of my quest here and there, and I was all set. I had assumed that even with this new space pirate theme, I would be able to salvage even a bit of seriousness in this campaign. Then I found out what they wanted to name their characters. The first was a deserted human soldier named Dirty Dan. He was the muscle of the group and kinda reminded me of Django Fett in how he played. Next was David, an android who acted as the ship's head mechanic, along with his trusty robot sidekick combat robot, Kilbert. Yes they actually named it Kilbert. I'll get to the Kalb of Kilbert in another story. After David was Captain Boat, a mystic Starfinder's version of a cleric who acted as the ship's captain. He ral played about how you'd expect someone named Captain Boat to RP. Next was Meat Tenderizer, a female elf technomancer who acted as the ship's science officer. Her backstory is that she's insanely good at blowjobs and refused to tell anyone her real name, hence why she is now called Meat Tenderizer. After her was Humper Stiltskin, a Masoki operative basically rogue. Neither her nor Meat Tenderizer will be featuring in this story, but I thought that I'd bring them up in case you guys want more. Anyways, this is the story of how Pedophile became a legend within the universe of Starfinder. Explaining his full exploits would take far too long, so I'll just explain his origin in this story. Okay. 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 Early into the campaign, David, Captain Boat and Dirty Dan wanted to get into contact with the Pirates Guild, a notorious group known to have their hands in almost everything illegal, from piracy to the black market. They met up with Eliason for the guild, and expressed interest in joining, as both a mode of initiation, and to prove they were true blue badasses, they were ordered that to prove their loyalty, they'd have to assassinate the son of a senator who was proving to be a thorn in the side of the pirates guild, sort of as a way to say shut up to them. Now, since my band of immoral scullywags had no qualms about killing anything they just loved killing they heartily agreed. Now, their first instinct was to find a scapegoat, so, they traveled to the planet they needed to and started watching the streets, looking for anyone who they could put the blame on. That's when they settled on the most conspicuous man they could find. I described him to them as thus. Like Steve Buscemi, with slick back, thinning hair just barely covering a balding head, and with a thin, pedo stash that Jared wished he could have grown. After describing the creepiest, most pedophilic man imaginable to them, they knew they had their guy, someone that the authorities would be all too eager to believe. After luring him into an alleyway and accidentally killing him, my band of misfits stole all of his personal belongings, including his clothes, removed his fingerprints, teeth and beating his body to an unrecognizable pulp before throwing him into a dumpster and setting it on fire so that the authorities wouldn't recognize that the group's human proxy had died before the crime would have been committed. Keep in mind they had no intention of doing this initially, and only did when the situation escalated. Upon reading up on their proxy more, they learned the confusing truth. As a joke, I had named him Pedophile. He was a math teacher, who apparently had no record of any illegal activity. They even checked his goddamn space internet history and found no porn on it. The guy was clean, just looked really dirty. Shrugging this off, our mystical captain boat, made us of his disguise self spell, and bought a room in the same hotel that the senator had a penthouse apartment in, one that his son was staying in. The misfits tried to get access or even sneak into the room, but alas, it was under heavy security, and for some unexplainable reason, the guards had absolutely no intention of letting Mr. Pedophile near the kid. Well, in a sequence of events that involved a jetpack and a traveling circus don't ask, late that night, the security guards heard screaming in the senator's son's apartment, and walked in to find the kid dead, with Pedophile standing above him with a bloody knife, after narrowly escaping a hail of laser and plasma bolts. Captain Boat as Pedophile shot up the glass of the window to the room, 
and pulled out the harpoon gun that he insisted on buying before this for this express purpose. Pedophile stood at the window, having fired his harpoon into the adjoining building. He turned and yelled, this won't be the last you heard of pedophile before jumping out of the window and slamming face first into the other building, nearly dying from the damage. Alas, he was right. Over time, pedophile became the scapegoat for everything this group, and often whatever the pirates guild did. Over time, he became without a doubt the most wanted man in the universe. Getting caught up with slavers, illegal mutants, necromancy, a robot uprising, the sacking of countless ships and space stations, and the eventual arrest of that poor traveling circus mentioned before. If you'd like to hear more about pedophilia or the group that he was involved with, let me know. I have no shortage of these babies. With love, your friend Nemean007. Okay, so I've gotten some requests to tell you some more stories about this Starfinder legend. If you haven't read the first tales of pedophilia then why'd you click on this one? Go find it. I'm not your mother. I've also gotten a request to explain the traveling circus, and I think you won't be disappointed. Captain Boat, under the guise of pedophilia, needed a distraction to get to the top of the building the senator's kid was in. So, he started a full-on freak versus normie war, as opposed to the ever-popular race war. He stood up tall and spoke to his circus brethren. Long have we lived in the shadows of those stupid chads and stacys out there. Long have our kind, the freaks, the weirdos, the ugly, and the talented, lived under their thumbs. As he was saying this, Dirty Dan and David both kept riling up the crowd, yelling pre-planned things to help with Captain Boat's point. At the same time, David was live streaming this over the Starfinder's version of the internet, the aptly named Space Internet as we affectionately called it. I say no more. I say that the only way that we can lubricate the wheels of progress is with the blood of those who stand in our way. History is written in blood and they will shed all of theirs tonight. Brothers and sisters, down with the normies. At this point, David, Boat and Dirty Dan were all chanting fucking normies. And thanks to a natural 20 diplomacy check, along with the circus, and comment section of the live stream. So, as one would expect, hijinks ensued with the circus going on to massacre everyone in sight, with them all chanting pedophile. So, with the ensuing riot, pedophile was able to slink up to the top unnoticed. I'll get into a few other stories for now, but remember this one, it will come up again later during the formation of the cult of pedophile. So, further into the story we go, this time, both Meat Tenderizer and Humper Stiltskin were joining the party you didn't forget about those two, did you? So, I figured I'd try and keep you guys in the loop and tell all of the stories in order from here on in, but I'll tell you the names of the ones that come to mind. If I remember any more I'll just throw them in as a bonus to make your day. They're as follows. The gangs of Absalom Station how I lost my going into town privileges. Dude, where's my spaceship? Fb open up the door. The 12 point run. The real X-Men 3. The X-Men inning. The Unperson. The rise of the cult of pedophile. And my personal favorite. The battle of the gods. Now, I want to give you all, my dear readers, as much pedophile starfinder hijinks as possible, but since this will probably be a long series of posts, so long as interest keeps up, that I'll try and be more brief. Well, at this point the gang was advancing in the pirates guild awfully fast, having raided multiple ships bases, taken a space station which the packed worlds all blamed on pedophile and going on a few quests for the pirates guild. Note that they were specifically loyal to their personal commander, not the king of the guild. This was a massive, intelligent and incredibly powerful Vesk big lizard people named Captain Thrax. It was in reference to the name of the dragon Vimithrax from cinema. Captain Thrax liked the party, and there can get shit done abilites, and so he told them to go to Absalom and meet with the heads of the black market there. Then fuckers started reducing the price at which they'd buy pirate guild stolen goods, and it was messing with their profits. So, Thrax wanted them to go to Absalom, intimidate the shit out of them, and get better prices. So they went there and the head of the black market downright refused to come and see them, sending a proxy in his place who adamantly refused to back down on his prices. Thoroughly annoyed, Dirty Dan pulled out his two arc pistols and shot dead some of the henchmen before beheading the proxy and sending it back to the leader of the black market. This only made things worse, as now any goons working for the market would attack the party on sight, and refused to meet with them, even if Meat Tenderizer offered them the best blow jobs imaginable. When faced with the reality that the head was a woman, she responded with I swing both ways. Still, nothing happened. Annoyed, 
pedophily went to work here. You see, the senator who had also been harassing the pirates guild wasn't very popular amongst the poor and disenfranchised of Absalom. Turns out, that his campaign to fight crime and piracy, along with the ongoing war between the Pact Worlds and the Aslanti Empire, made things more difficult for the poor and homeless, who often went without water or electricity for extended periods of time. Thanks to pedophilia intimidating him to back down on his policies, and his speech about how the normies were keeping them down, pedophilia actually had quite a bit of sway with the poor and disenfranchised. So, with him realizing this potential power, he began to abuse it maliciously. He convinced the people that now it was organized crime that was keeping them down. Crime itself was fine, but these organized criminals kept all the money for themselves and only sought to get rich off the blood of the poor. If they wanted freedom and equality to the middle and upper classes, they'd need to purge their slums of organized crime. Next thing you know, thanks to another amazing role, the people of the slums were rioting, brutally massacring everyone affiliated with a gang like a zombie horde, ripping them apart like animals. A bit disturbed, but noting how effective it was as the black markets and other crime syndicates were forced to go completely underground at this point. Pedophile promised that the Pirates Guild could make it all better, and that so long as they knew who was on top, they would survive. The black market agreed to the previous price terms, but cryptically dropped that their new clients would make sure to deal with you and your guild. They ignored it. Unfortunately, this brought unforeseen consequences for Pedophile. Now with the government finding out that he was both alive, and riling up people to massacre criminals, and part of the pirate guild, he became the single most wanted man in the universe. And now every organized crime syndicate that had even a bit of influence in Absalom Station hated his guts and would send assassins against him if pedophilia even set foot on a civilized world. This meant that pedo lost his going into town privileges that day. Fun little side note a group of particularly zealous homeless people wanted to follow pedophilia wherever he went. They got annoying quickly, so he sold them to some slavers for a quick buck. And that, my friends, is some more pedophilia hijinks. From your dear friend, Nemean007. Around this point, the gang was level 10, and had made quite an impression on the Pirates Guild, and were offered to represent them in a race called the 12 Point Run. The 12 Point Run was a super dangerous race where other ships went to the 12 most dangerous places in the known galaxy. These included the homeworld of the evil Aslanti Empire basically space Nazis, a field of asteroids that like to have random magical effects happen around them such as shooting lightning, or using suggestion to compel pilots to crash into them, and my personal favorite, a literal portal to hell. Also, in this race, it was completely kosher to murder your opponents. Also keep in mind that they hadn't entered under the name of pedophile. I explained to them that if they had, everyone in the contest would have immediately gunned it. For them, the gang heartily accepted this, and went to the accompanying feast party that all of the contestants got. The players spent it doing the following. Humper Stiltskin and David were sabotaging the vessel of the previous winner. Dirty Dan was fucking a female captain right in the middle of the dance floor. Meat Tenderizer was blowing the head judge of the race to try and get some favor. Kilbert was staying on the ship because if it didn't we couldn't promise that it wouldn't murder everyone at the party. So, it went to go and start blogging about its philosophy of murder on its popular video blog channel. Captain Bode was taking a note out of Dirty Dan's book, and tried turning the party into an orgy. Screaming orgy porgy I love you if you get that reference at the top of his lung. Until half the people at the fist were fucking. Keep in mind that this event was the most live streamed event in the galaxy. So you can see what I was dealing with. The next morning, our crew woke up hungover, but ready for the race. It began rather hilariously, because David managed to successfully rig the former champion's drift engine its faster than light engine to partially fail after its first use. This meant that when they tried to jump into the drift to get to the first point, only half of the ship went to the first point, and thus the race began. It went rather smoothly at first, with the gang only having to kill a few other contestants, as the obstacles themselves were far better at doing that than they were. All in all, they actually managed to take the lead at one point, until Captain Boat got an idea. They stopped. They just stopped. In the lead, right by the Hellgate. After that, Captain Boat emerged to where the live steam video camera on board his own ship was, only he was in the form of pedophile. He proudly announced that he was going to win the race. After he did that the first thing that happened was Hell pretty much did everything in its power to destroy the SS sail hatching. They sent out fighters tried to pull it in with increased gravity, and even sent out giant chains which wrapped around the ship and tried to physically pull it to hell. 
That's when all of the surviving contestants emerged, every single one of them firing all of their weapons at the SS sail hatching. It was only with a natural 20 that the gunner's roll that allowed them to shoot off the chains and jump to hyperspace before they would have been hit. Unfortunately, something worse happened. You see, by this point, Pedophilia had supported a necromantic cult uprising in the Academy of Magic so that he could get free ice cream long story. He had started a freak versus normie war that was still going on. He was directly responsible for the rise in popularity of Kilbert's cult of killing which had caused a spree of murders to start coming up. And he was also directly responsible for dozens of destroyed and raided space stations, starships, and outposts. He was, far and away, one of the most wanted men in the universe, and now every government knew exactly where he was going. And the next stop in the 12 point run, just so happened to be the Aslanti Empire's home world. Because of that, every single readily available Starfleet converged on that single location, each one of them trying to arrest him by using overwhelming force. The Pact Systems, the Aslanti, the Vesk, two other empires, and even the fleet that the main enemies of the campaign, every single one of them converged on that location. And all started fighting each other, because the Pact Systems and the two miscellaneous empires hated the Aslanti, the Aslanti hated them, and the Vesk and campaign villains pretty much hated everyone. What amounted to the biggest battle in galactic history began, and pretty much resulted in the death of every other contestant in the race. But now they were faced with a rather large problem, in that the SS Sailhattan was the most recognized ship in the galaxy at that moment. And I told them that there was no way they could escape the battle in a destroyer sized ship without getting blown to pieces. So, Pedophile began Operation Hide in a bigger ship, leave and get tacos we are bad at naming stuff. Basically, Pedophile rammed the SS Sailhattan into the massive hangar of a dreadnought of the Vesk Empire in a pretend act of suicide. They had actually managed to calculate it rather well and essentially boarded the ship that way, sustaining relatively minimal damage, thanks in no small part to Captain Boat's absurdly high piloting check. After nobly sacrificing the crew to the Vesk Marines, the gang managed to sneak their way to the bridge of the ship under an invisibility sphere generated by Meat Tenderizer. After murdering the entire bridge, Humper Stiltskin contacted the capital ship of the Vesk fleet, and told them that they sustained too much damage from the ramming of the SS Sailhatchen and they wouldn't be of use anymore. One successful diplomacy check later, and they had permission to leave from high command. After this, they jumped to a point in space, about halfway to the next, and thankfully last point of the 12 point run, then meet Tenderizer, having the highest bluff skill, ordered all crew to the main hangar for a time because they had a very special birthday to celebrate. This was so hilarious to me that I had to let them do it. So, after Pedophile got on the intercom and told them that he has commandeered the ship, locked the doors and told them that he'd allow them to live if they joined him, or else he'd disable the shields keeping the hangar airtight and kill them all. Most of the crew agreed to this and murdered those that didn't. So, from there Pedophile just completed the contest inside the Dreadnought. It didn't matter how slow it was because all of the other contestants were killed in the battle. Once they returned to the world where the race started, unfortunate for them. Most of those awaiting them wanted to arrest or kill him. Unfortunately for those potential vigilantes and thieves, this incident attracted members of the cult of killing to the planet, who proceeded to gun down everyone in sight. From there they sold the remains of the dreadnought and used the winnings to buy a bigger and better sail hatching. And that, my dear friends, is how you win a race, pedophile style. If you want more, I can give you more. So before I get into this I should say if you guys remember Bram the Honorary Wizard this story is written by the same guy and I also managed to get in contact with him and he says he will be continuing that storyline so I can't wait to see what he gets into next. But no I really enjoyed this Always Sunny and Starfinder was a very accurate name to give this I have to say all the characters were great just wish we had more to work with each of them have so. Much more to give and who would not want more from pedophile so make sure to subscribe for when more is written and hopefully the wait is not too long. Also need to say me and my girlfriend are working on something together over on her channel she has not posted anything yet but we are planning on the first video to be out for early next week with any luck. If you are on the discord you will get a lot of the references and even if you aren't I think it's going to be a lot of fun I really can't wait we have two videos recorded but they need edited and I don't want to say too much of what we have in mind just yet. Though as always I hope you guys have enjoyed and be sure to subscribe for more it's always sunny in Starfinder. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop!
Just stop it. Stop. No. Just stop it. It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop.